Several weeks into the experiment, work on the spinal cord project is progressing. Hey, Chris. Jack's hypothesis that the gel might help some of the problems associated with spinal cord injury appears to be correct. We've shown that we can safely inject it into the spinal cord in the injured animals, that it gels, that it fills up the cavities, uh, and that animals improve functionally. They can walk better after we've done the gel. Both control and gel-injected animals received identical injuries and were evaluated post-injury at the same level. Zero being the lowest score, which means it cannot move its hind limbs at all. It's completely paralyzed. And 21 being the score that a normal mouse would get. Starts yeah. off with a spasm. I keep focusing on the hind limbs. And there. It pulls it in and pushes it back out again. And it does it on the other side, too. But as you can see, the mouse is not using this for any functional movement. Now compare that to an animal who gets a BBB of 9. The animal that received a 9 was treated with gel. Not only is it using it for movement, it's putting weight on its hind limbs and it's pushing off as it moves across. And you can see that she can lift up her butt, actually. because She can push off and put weight on her hind limbs. So even though a 7 to a 9 may not seem like a big difference, functionally, it's, it's a huge difference. So this is encouraging. Although encouraging, it was not enough to prove that the gel was actually causing regeneration. In order to do that, they had to be able to see the axonal tracks. And in order to see them, they had to stain them. But Vicky's technique of staining the spinal cord sections kept causing the tissue to break.